Hi, I'm Joe, and welcome to Can You Learn Japanese with Pokemon Sword and Shield. Let's get started. Pokemon Sword and Shield were released in late 2019 as exclusives for the Nintendo Switch. They received major paid DLC updates during 2020, and as of the time I'm making this video, both games and DLC still retail for almost full price, with a minimal discount for a newer release of the game bundled with the DLCs. So, I'd class this as a fairly high investment compared to other games. That being said, the games are quite big with lots to do, but more on that later. The games are available worldwide in stores and on the eShop with Japanese as a language option regardless of region. What's more, this includes both a hiragana only text option or a more natural kana and kanji mix, selectable from the settings. I'd really recommend the mixed option for learners of all levels due to the sheer number of homophones in Japanese. In Pokemon Sword and Shield, there is no voice acting, so once again, it'll be reading practice only. However, most dialogue requires a button input to advance the text, meaning you can really take your time to look up any new words and reread sentences multiple times. There are a few times, such as status effects during battle, where the text will auto advance quickly. You can change the default text speed to slow, but sometimes it's still hard to catch these moments. Luckily, they're few and far between. Most of the dialogue in the game is fairly straightforward, since the target audience is children, despite what the hardcore breeding and battling scenes will have you believe. Some of the themes of the game talk about some supernatural phenomenon, however, but again, this isn't too often, so it shouldn't be too big a deal. The main criticism people have against learning Japanese from Pokemon is you have to learn all the Pokemon names and moves, which aren't real words and that's a waste of brain space and effort. This sounds like a valid criticism on the surface, but I think it's irrelevant. As someone who's been playing Pokemon for over 20 years, I know most of the standard attacks which persist from game to game, and any new moves are basically subtle tweaks from existing moves. I'd argue that having Pokemon moves in a different language encourages you to read the move's description more closely than you would in your native language, and these descriptions tend to use real words. For example, this is a grass-type move, so we know it's super effective against rock-type Pokemon. But what does it actually do? From reading the description, we can understand, or take a guess, at the effect, and then from actually using the move, we get real-time feedback on exactly what it does. And in this case, we regain health based on the damage taken away from the enemy. And with regards to Pokemon names, it can be annoying thinking, or oh, I don't know what Pokemon to use next because I don't know this name. And sure, maybe you're at a type disadvantage for one turn, but with nearing 900 monsters, I'll be honest, I struggle to remember the names and types in English at the best of times. So, in Pokemon Sword and Shield, there is a story. <laughs> but in all seriousness, it's a mildly entertaining story that puts children in the shoes of a new Pokemon trainer on the road to become a champion. It does its job, but it isn't too deep. Thus, there aren't too many points in which language learners can get stuck. There are a couple of occasions where main NPCs will ask you to do something, or collect something, or go somewhere to progress, but with the help of the map menu with a handy waypoint flag, Plus a short description of the objective, it shouldn't cause too big a problem. Pokemon games have been gaining the reputation of getting easier over the years. Whether that's true or not, for learners, that's great, because time grinding is not time learning. If you want a bit more of a challenge, make it yourself. In my playthrough of Sword, I decided to use only grass type Pokemon for the entire game. I could catch other types, but I'd only use grass type. Made the game much more fun, much more challenging. Pokemon games can have progression in more ways than just the story, however. Gotta catch them all, right? And though it's a daunting task nowadays, collecting is still a fun objective. On the road to catching them all, though, there are some big roadblocks. One example with regards to evolving Pokemon. There are times you must use certain items on specific Pokemon, find secret areas, or make them happy at different times of the day. This isn't so much a language problem as it is a new to the Pokemon franchise problem. I'm sure NPCs somewhere in the world do give you hints and advice on catching and evolving Pokemon, but it could be a bit overwhelming to keep track of it all. However, talking to every NPC isn't that bad an idea, as I'll discuss in the next section. Gaming to learning ratio. 
The majority of gameplay time in Pokemon is battling and walking around the overworld, which in itself doesn't require that much Japanese reading or comprehension. So if you want to maximize your immersion time, I highly recommend talking to the NPCs. Sometimes it's nonsense, sometimes it's advice, sometimes lore, sometimes it's funny, albeit a little corny, but just trying to decipher which kind of dialogue it is, is comprehension in itself, as well as filling in lore about the world of Gala and Pokemon in general, so it really pays to talk to people. Another method that I really recommend to get your immersion up is catching Pokemon. Yeah, that's right. Every time you catch a Pokemon, their data is logged in the Pokedex, along with a short snippet of facts or other information. This can be super interesting, crazy, creepy, and they're just a really nice bite-sized piece of language comprehension practice. Something I like to do is catch a Pokemon, read the Pokedex entry, then send it out into the world with a wonder trade. When I get another Pokemon back in return, then I read their entry before repeating the process. In this regard, I think the ratio is pretty good if you want a more laid back study session. Small chunks of info spliced between longer stretches of just playing the game. Okay, so the opening 30 minutes to an hour, depending on how long it takes for this game, is lots of text. It's lots of reading and you might be feeling a bit burned out. So this is just after the, the start of the game. And what we're going to do is we're going to catch a Pokemon, check the Pokedex, and see if we learn any new words. So I'm going to catch this little fox-looking thing down here. So yes, it. So wild. And then I called my Hibani Himitsu. <laughs> right. So we'll hit it with a Hinoko. So like you know, Ember. He is in fire. And that's it's not really effective, is it? So you see the text moved pretty quickly. I didn't I didn't see exactly what it said, but I saw the word shippo. So like we have tail. Tail something, we can probably guess it's tail whip, right? So this time I'm gonna do tai atari. So tai is the, the kanji for body, right? So you just like hit the enemy with your body, so that's that's tackle. Right. Give it one more tackle. Right, that looks weak enough. Okay, shippo furu. So furu to to shake, to wave. Alright, so we're gonna hit that Pokeball. And I'm gonna throw this. Okay, good, so it's got it's up. So like captured, caught. And then Kirkenchi. Experience. Moratta received. It's not too bad. Hopefully there's a words we know. So Rebulu Hachi ni Agata sa Agari to to go up. So we went up to level 8. Denko Sekka. Denko Sekka. Have to check what that is. Okay, so we have Kusune. So here's his data. So here it's a Kitsune Pokemon. So a fox, fox Pokemon. Uh, type, Aku, Dark. Takasa, Height, Omosa, Weight. Tatakata Kazu. I guess how many times with we've encountered it, how many times we've fought it. So one, this is the first time. Okay, so if we have a look at this, we have Hoku no Pokemon. So Hoku no Pokemon, other Pokemon ga mitsuketa esa. So esa is like food, food you feed an animal, or if an animal's hunting, the, the prey that the animal's hunting. And then we have this kanji here, which I'm not too sure what it is. So we're gonna give it a quick check. So we have, it is, Kasumeru. Kasumeru is to, to steal, to rob. So we have kasumete kurashiteru. So to steal and live. So it steals the food other Pokemon find, and that's how it lives its life. And then we have fuka fuka. Fuka fuka is soft. Thing like soft, fluffy. So fuka fuku no. And then I'm not sure this word either. So I know it's the kanji niku, as in meat, and then like q or Tama as in like a uh, ball or sphere, but together, I'm not too sure. So we have Nikuku, which is the paw of a animal, like the, the sole of an animal's foot, the paw. Yeah, so Nikuku, Nikuku, what? Ashi Otto, so the sound of, sound of footsteps, sound of walking, 
立ってない。It's like you, you cannot hear it walking, you cannot hear it moving. So, what do we learn? We learn Nikiku, which is like the sole of an animal's foot, and we learned Kasumeru, to steal. So this is from one Pokédex entry. I think that's pretty good. I think that's pretty interesting. <laughs> so, do we want to give it a nickname? To give a nickname, we've got here Tsukemas. Tsukemas. Tsukemas ka? Yeah. <laughs> I don't often give them nicknames. So, that's just, you know, that's. One example of catching, catching a Pokemon. Huh. So now we've got a trainer coming up ahead. We'll, uh, we'll have a chat with him and then maybe call this demo done because this is the game basically catching Pokemon and talking to trainers. So we've got Pokemon Trainer te no wa otakai me ga attara. So when two trainers' eyes meet, shoubu o suru no ga mana da yo. So we've got shoubu, which is like Match fight, which you'll see again and again and again in this. Every Pokemon encounter has Shoubu. And it's Suru no ga Mana. So Mana is like the English manners, but it means here it's more like, I don't know, like a custom. Like, I don't know, how would you translate that? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it says like manners, etiquette. But I'd, I'd say, yeah, it's, it's custom. That's, that's just what people do here, right? When two trainers' eyes meet, They have a battle. That's what people do. So we're gonna fight this kid. <laughs> He's got a nice, nice jumper on, nice sweater. All right. Um. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna kill this squirrel. Uh. I don't think you need to see this, <laughs> but I hope, I hope the little Pokédex entry was enjoyable. I hope you learned something. I did. I learned two words. So uh. Yeah. That's that's how to learn Japanese with Pokémon. Back to the rest of the video. As always. Fun factor depends on you as a person and as a gamer. Sword and Shield have got a lot of negativity since release, but I was pretty satisfied with it. And part of the allure of playing in a different language is that it really feels like you're in a different world. And thanks to the nice visuals, expansive world, and whimsical music, it's a pleasant experience and an exciting world to discover. If you've never played a Pokemon game before, you might struggle with learning all the different types and moves and abilities. But there are some quality of life upgrades over the earlier games, such as the weakness and resistant indicator for moves during battle, and even just accessing the info for each move during the battle much, much quicker. I think with the DLC, the game is a really vast experience, and you can expect to spend upwards of 30 hours, but of that time, the productive learning hours will depend on how you're playing the game. Catching, training, and exploring are just as fun as they've ever been, but it's talking to people. And reading in game texts that make up the learning portion. So it's that time again to answer the question of can you learn Japanese with Pokemon Sword and Shield? And you've guessed it, the answer is yes, but there might be better options out there. If you're a Pokemon fan, and as the most popular media franchise of all time, I'm betting a lot of you are. Then, this is a great game and possibly the best Pokemon game to learn Japanese with, period. Thanks to the quality of life upgrades, easy to read fonts and kanji options, and a more streamlined story. But if Pokemon games have never quite done it for you, or you've just really come to dislike the series as it's changed over time, then, due to the spread out nature of the Japanese content in the game, it might be better to spend your time playing something a bit more hands on. Where progress is reliant on reading and understanding the Japanese. Or just play something in Japanese you really enjoy. If you want some advice, please check out my other videos. Personally, though, I enjoyed my experience with the game. I felt it was a good length and I got some good reading practice out of it, particularly from the Pokédex entries. Anyway, as always, thank you for watching. Have you played Pokémon Sword and Shield in Japanese? Or any other Pokémon games for that matter? Do you have any tips on how to get the most out of the game as a language learning experience? If so, please leave a comment letting us know. Also, if you like what I do, be sure to like, subscribe, and share with your language learning friends. Thanks for watching. I've been Joe from Zento. Bye bye.